so uh, this is Ms. Hine and we're doing hashtags real talks with Ms. Hine. Uh, and today my guest is Mr. Linman. Yay, please welcome him. Hey, good morning. <laughs> morning, good morning. How are you doing? I'm great, I'm great. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, I know it is, it's Monday. Um, I thought I was supposed to do this at 10. I don't know where I got messed up, but then my computer decided to do all sorts of weird computer stuff and restart. <laughs> Um, Not a problem. So uh, I, w what we're doing here is basically kind of asking our other people, guest speakers, to kind of tell us about their um, financial, personal financial mistakes, learning, things that they've grown and, and, and share some wisdom with us. So uh, this week we're specifically kind of wondering about like how you picked which college you went to and how you pick like going to college versus not going to college. Um, so let's start there. So kind of tell us a little bit of your thought process there. Well, so as far as going to college, not going to college, um, in the family I grew up in, college, not going to college was probably not an option. Um, and even now I'm the least educated in my family. You know, I have basically a master's degree and I'm still undereducated based on my parents and my grandparents on both, both my mom's and my dad's side, um, all have, you know, postgraduate degrees and, and did a lot of, with that. So going to college, I, I don't know that I had a choice. <laughs> Not going to college wasn't something I considered. Um, but as far as, you know, how to choose what college and what to do, that, that you know, that was never told by my parents, you, you're going to go here, you're going to do this, whatever, that was all up to me. Um, and what I really did was I looked at, I knew by the time I was you know, junior, senior high school, I knew I liked science. I knew I wanted to be in some science field. Um, so I was looking for, when I started thinking about applying to colleges, I was looking for colleges that were going to be, were going to be both good for science, but yet that I could afford. Because um, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, my mom was home with my sisters and I, so it was just my dad working and he was a teacher. So we, you know, to live on, we weren't, you know, homeless or anything like that, but we didn't have a lot of money. So, and both my sisters are only a year and two years younger than me. So they were going to be going to college. So I was looking for things that I could afford yet still had good science programs. Um, so I did a lot of research before I even thought about applying. Mm -hmm. I looked at all the different science programs that were out there um, for various schools and, uh, my grandparents are both were both professors of chemistry, so um, I, I used their advice a lot on where to apply and what 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 schools had good science programs. And so those two things taken together, I ended up I really you know, and I would not recommend this, but I only applied to one school. Um, I applied to Cal, um, UC Berkeley, because um, I knew that's where I wanted to go. And mm -hmm. I was if I wasn't going to get in. I would, I would have probably my back. I would have chosen to go to a JC and then try to transfer there or something. Um, so I thought about that, but that's that's where I wanted to go because that had the best combination of it has a great chemistry program, great mm -hmm. science program in, in general. Plus, I wouldn't describe it as affordable, but it was certainly more affordable than private schools or going out of state to school. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really how I chose how I chose to go to Cal. Okay. Cool. I, I like that thought that thank you for sharing your metacognition on like how you came to your conclusion. I appreciate that. So, um, so then while you're in college, did you kind of jump majors a couple of times or? Um, I really didn't. I came close. You know, after I, I know, I remember distinctly after my freshman year thinking, why the heck am I going into chemistry? I don't like this. <laughs> it was an organic chemistry. I, my that freshman <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my freshman chemistry classes were just like the worst classes I took in my entire freshman year. I loved the history class I took. I even liked the English class I took in freshman year, which to me was astounded me, but I did. Um, but I didn't really like the chemistry class. Um, and so, but I didn't think at that point to switch. I thought, oh, I'll give it a little more time because I didn't know with anything else I wanted to switch to. So okay. I just gave it a little more time. So I did. And then I took organic chemistry and I just loved organic chemistry. And so that, that, to me, that's immediately, this is why I'm a chem major. This is why I'm here, is to learn more about this. And I took O-Chem um, from a professor who was, I think he was 70 at the time when I took him. He, was, he, had, he had retired two years ago, but he was still teaching classes and doing research. 
his own. Um, and he was a great teacher. But what really kept me in chemistry was the teaching assistant um, in that class. And he held week Wednesday nights, it was like from six to nine. Wednesday nights from six to nine, he held these review study sessions. And we went to the first one thinking, I uh, better go because I'm, you know, it's going to be hard. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Like, there were like 15 people there and it was this guy and he was just the wackiest guy and he was just you know he wore the clothes he looked like he, I mean I he was just really just hilarious but he knew his chemistry and he could teach it to us in a way that we could grasp it and figure it out and do it so then I started going every single Wednesday to that that session that fact that became the highlight of my week hmm. um, chemically was to go to these week these week night sessions um so that kept me in chemistry. So I really didn't ever switch from chemistry. I thought about it, but I never switched. <laughs> was, um, would you say this person was a role model to why you became a teacher or? No. Were there other factors? No, there were certainly other factors. I mean, well, maybe, I mean, maybe indirectly. I certainly didn't think about it at the time. But if you had asked me, even when I was in college, when I was in high school, I, you know, all the careers out there are out there, I would never be a teacher, ever. Both well, you saw were, firsthand your parents being teachers, right? Both my parents were teachers. That's what they, well, my, my dad was a teacher and then my mom went back to teaching. She was a teacher before I was born. And then when I went to college, she went back to teaching. So I saw what the job entailed. I saw the work that they had to do and just the, the, the payment that they got for that work wasn't all that huge. Mm -hmm. Saying so you just anything but that. Um, of course, here I am, but. Um, Me too. <laughs> so it might have, it, it might have, he might have had some indirect influence. Because I know when I went to graduate school, the part of graduate school that you know I really did enjoy was being a teaching assistant myself. Mm. I paid for my graduate school um, was to be a teaching assistant as much as I could, and I really liked that part of it. And um, then eventually, when I decided to leave the PhD program I was in, um, it took a couple years to figure out what it was I was going to do. I was a chef for two years. Um, I cooked for two years professionally, but I figured that I, I, I didn't see myself doing that as a career. Um, so then I was thinking, I just went back and thought about, okay, well, what, what do I, what do I like to do? And that's, that's when it started, I started thinking about teaching is that's when I realized, well, I really liked being a teaching assistant for the chemistry classes at university of Washington mm -hmm. and then thinking of those other things, but so maybe indirectly. So um, I didn't know this, that you were a chef for two years. Is, was yeah. that the only other job you did other than teaching or did you? Um, as an adult, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, when I was in school, you know, I worked, I worked in the library for a while. I worked, worked at a bookstore in Berkeley mm -hmm. uh, for a year. Um, I did, after I graduated from Cal, I did some undergraduate research. Um, I was a research technician for the university for a year, um, things like that. But yeah, it's the only real, you know, other professional job that I've had. And now you do teach, you do teach the kids to cook with chemistry sometimes, right? The students? I try. I try to do some, some of that. And I would love at some point to do, you know, a food science, culinary arts type course full time, but it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Um, so I was going to ask what some of your hobbies were, but it sounds like that's, <laughs> that's a big hobby for you. It used, you know, it used to be, yeah. you know, I, you know, when I have time, I like to do it. And during the summer, I do a lot of cooking, but I don't, you know, during the week, it's during the school year, it's really hard to find the time that it takes right. to do a lot of, a lot of that, but I still like it. A lot of the fancy stuff. <laughs> so what kind of um, words of wisdom would you give our students if they're not sure where they're headed or not sure if they even want to go to college? Um, well, if they're not sure where they're headed, and I, to me, that's probably most people, um, I, I would say just choose a college base that feels right. Visit a bunch of, visit colleges. You know, even without knowing anything about the programs that they offer, um, if you go to a campus, every campus has its own feel. And even spending a couple hours on that campus, you'll be able to feel whether you'd be comfortable there or not. You get a report right away, and every campus is different. Um, so I would say, first of all, visit, visit schools, just walk on the campus, whether you want to take a tour of the campus or not, organized tour or whatever, I don't know, but visit a lot of schools, see what feels right. Um, especially if you don't know what program you're going to do, you're not going to look at, oh, well, I'm going to want this because they have a really good program here. Most colleges have good programs in a lot of different areas. So that's, you know, 
they all have different strengths and maybe some weaknesses, but they're all, they're all there for education. So they've got a bunch of stuff. Um, so that's really not necessarily a driving factor. So I would say just choose a college, go um, and find something you like, take a bunch of different courses. Yeah. Find something you like, take more of that. If you like it, make it a major. Um, most schools have are flexible. You can create majors and tailor majors to what you are interested in. Mm -hmm. Things like that. So I would just say be open. Be open to learning. Be open to finding what you might like. If you haven't found it yet, that's okay. And the other thing I would say is this. Just because you choose something major, it doesn't mean you're going to have to do it for your entire career. There's nothing to say you can do something for a while and then find something else you want to do and do that. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that have had three or four careers, in their, my age, and have had three or four different careers. Um, in fact, it's probably... By, when I look at people, when I, the people I know, that's more common than someone like me who's been, I've been in the same, same career field for what, 27 years now. Yeah. So don't be afraid to try something. If you find something you like and like it for a while, you, even if you do it professionally for a while, you don't have to do it your whole life. Mm -hmm. Roped into it forever. It is, Unless you really so, like it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you like it, do it. And that's, I guess that's what I'm saying is just, Find something that makes you feel good. Find something that makes you happy. Find something you can be successful at. Um, whether that involves college or not, really. Um, you know, if there's something you, you, you find that you really are passionate about and like and you don't need college for, do that. I mean, if you find something you like that uh, later in life that you need college for, you can go back to college. Yeah. Age limit for college students. So. There's, yeah, there is no age limit for college students. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, so Mr. Welch is kind of rewriting this class to be more of like adulting 101. What kind of things mm -hmm. do you need to be an adult once you leave campus, right? Because there's a bunch of seniors in our class. Um, and so we just kind of want to give them some life skills. So what kind of, just in general, doesn't have to be about college or anything, what kind of wisdom would you give our students? Um, wow. I, I would say best advice I would give you is don't spend money you don't have. Um, just don't do it. You know, you can get a credit card. And I, you know, when I first, after I first got a job, when I was at Cal, I got a credit card. I misused it. You know, I spent a bunch of money and then I was stuck paying it back and I was making money and I wasn't able to spend that money because I was paying off the balance of my credit card forever. Um, don't do that. It's, it's real tempting to do. It's, it's fun to do. You know, it allows you to do some things temporarily, but it's not, it's it has negative consequences as you go through. Just don't spend what you don't have. You know, it's really, it's really when easy. I was in college. You know, everybody I knew was poor, so we didn't have nobody had any money. Mm -hmm. so we we're all spending our money on the college, so we didn't have any money to spend anywhere. So you, you can have fun without it, and you can do things without it. Um, memories are much more important than money. Um, it's hard to do. It's hard. To, it's hard to think in those terms. Um, but if you have enough money to pay your basic bills, you know, you have, you have a roof over your head. You have enough food to survive. It may not be the gourmet food, but it, it's food to survive. You know, worry about that and then worry about other things as time goes by. Mm -hmm. Probably the best thing. You know, I learned it fairly quickly, you know, within a year or two, but, you know, so it could have been a lot worse for me. But even then, even that year set me back a little bit. Yeah. So I guess that would really be just my best advice. You know, don't spend money you don't have. My parents might teach me that, but you know, them telling me that didn't didn't do it. I actually had right. to it a little bit myself. Yeah. <laughs> what not to do, you learn by making the mistake. But um, I don't know. Other than that, I would just say the only other that and the only other thing I would really say, whether it was college related or not, if you need help, ask for it. Oh, that's a good one. You need help, ask for it. Whether it's about something you need to know, something you need to do, how to do something, how to get something done, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. People are, people are good. People are always going to be willing to help. Ask them. Yeah. Don't let pride get in the way. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. Ooh, those are good things. Thanks, Mr. Lemon. I really appreciated our time together. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I'm going to stop the